Hi guys and welcome to a new video. This week I'm going to be focusing on the cooling system and I'm going to give the cooling system a complete flush. It's getting a little bit dirty um, in this reservoir, you can see it's brown. It shows signs that it's got a bit of rust in the system which isn't good so it needs to be drained down and completely flushed out. I'm going to take the coolant bottle off and give that a complete clean as well. It's really easy to remove the front end of this van. These two screws here take the smiley face off and then you've got four bolts on this slam panel and there's one right down there to remove and then that whole section comes off. If you guessed these would be 10 mil, you'd be right. this nice big catcher here, put that under there and get some pliers and drop the bottom hose off the radiator. I'm actually going to take the cooling fan off. I loosened this off earlier if you want to know how to remove these if you're struggling to get it off. Um, I made a separate video about doing the timing belt on water pump. I'll show you in that video how to remove it. got a little bit of a coolant spill here just make sure you clean that up because it's bad for the environment I removed the two bolts at the top of the coolant reservoir I then used some pliers to withdraw all of the hose clamps and then you should be able to pull the hoses off if you can't remove this one it might be easier to just remove this jubilee clip and take the hose off the top of the thermostat housing There we go. I then remove the smaller top hose from the radiator. Now it's just this bottom hose we've got to try and get off. Let's remove this radiator hose here. Let's take that one off there. This is the thermostat housing. I disconnect the Jubilee clip which holds the hose on the back of the thermostat housing and then I remove the hose. I disconnect the temperature sensor. You just squeeze the metal tab in to remove it. I then unbolt the thermostat housing. And to get to the front bolt you have to unscrew the housing. With the thermostat housing removed, I put some tissue in the engine block just so that we don't get any rubbish in there and then I scrape off the old gasket. I don't like the state of my thermostat housing and this face here is kind of warped so I don't think it's going to seal up very well with a new gasket. I've actually ordered a new replacement one so that should be here tomorrow and then we can fit the new one. Let's take the radiator out. Be careful, it's still got a bit of coolant in it. Right, I've ordered a new radiator because it looks like that one's got a pinhole in it. Right here, it's very corroded as well. So I'm gonna replace this too. While I've got access in here, I'm also gonna clean all this rusty part up and paint it. I've painted all in here with rust converter and then I'm going to put some red oxide primer over any little rusty bits. I'm just going to move the van out of the way and then we can carry on cleaning the reservoir um, and then I'll put it all back together once the new parts arrive. Although we haven't got the radiator or any cooling in here, it should be alright just to move the van out of the way. I want to tape up 
the ports. So here we have some dishwasher soap. And it's really good for cleaning inside here. Um, because the little salt crystals are slightly abrasive. So we put some of that in there. I'll put some other chemicals in there as well. A bit of lime scale remover. A bit of elbow grease. Anything I can get my hands on, that's going in there. Just put the lid on. And just keep shaking it until it, it loosens up all this scum. This stuff is bloody fantastic for removing soap scum. So hopefully, pour a little drop in there. It should help clean the inside of this bottle. bought this ultrasonic cleaner recently and I've just put this thermostat in there with a little bit of degreaser. If you need any of the car parts or materials used in this video I'll put links in the description where you can easily find them and by buying them through the links you'll also be supporting the channel so thank you if you buy them through the links. So I ground back any rusty bits in here, painted it with rust converter and I've just given it a coat of red oxide primer. It looks much better than it did anyway. It's nice and clean all up there. To flush this system through, I'm gonna get my hose pipe and this attachment on it. And I'm just gonna put that in the top here where the reservoir bottle would usually be. And now I'm gonna go and turn it on. And that should force water through the system and it will flush it all out and it will come out of the bottom hose down here. On my van, because I've got a hot water glorifier for the camper van, I'm just going to open that up as well and allow that to flush through. So at the moment it's coming down here and it's literally pushing it straight down through. But if we squeeze this hose, it will force water back up through the heater matrix and round the circuit that way. So let's squeeze this hose. And you can hear it now flooding the engine. It's forcing water up through that heater matrix and round there. I'm happy that that side is clear. Just give it another squeeze to force the coolant up through the heater matrix. Now I'm going to move my hose from this one into the top here. And lastly, I just want to get this hose in here. that's the power flushing side of it. It's completely optional whether you want to replace your radiator. If it's corroded like mine and got any signs that it's leaking, it's worth replacing. But if you're going to keep your original radiator, just make sure you flush it through with a hose pipe before refitting it. Here we have a brand new radiator.
Our new radiator just sits on these rubber bungs, so one here and one up this end. You just drop it on the top of the rubber bungs, like that. Here we have a nice new thermostat housing. We just need to swap over a few things. So in here we'll have our thermostat. Only goes one way around, it won't fit in that way. So we need to take the temperature sensor out of this one and put it in this one. So let's unscrew that. The temperature sensor just keeps spinning. I think it's the nut insert, it's just spinning. So I'm gonna get a screwdriver behind here Get that underneath there, and that should help us lift it out. Let's put the temperature sensor in the vise, and then we can try and get this thermostat housing off this way. And that's my screwdriver snapped. We're going to have to cut this sensor out. I ended up using the heat gun on this just to melt the plastic a little bit and then I managed to pry it out with a screwdriver. So now we need to get the temperature sensor out of this insert that was in the plastic housing. So let's just clamp that gently in the vise and then we should... Nope. Nope. There we go. There it is. I put a small amount of PTFE on the sensor so it doesn't leak through the threads and then screw it into the new thermostat housing. The housing also comes with a new thermostat seal so I swapped this over for the new one. Stick the thermostat in. The thermostat housing can either be installed with this rubber o-ring or a paper gasket. You don't want to install it with both. To get this bolt in you have to remove the connection piece. Slide it onto the hose at the back and then you can bolt it down to the engine. Tighten it up. The Haynes manual says 17 to 20 newton meters, but that seems a bit too much, so I'm going to just go for 15. Now we just need to get some grips that fit. These will do, just to nip it up. And to reconnect the temperature sensor with these plugs, you just squeeze this metal tab here. Squeeze the metal tab. It'll just slide on like that. Let's reconnect the coolant reservoir. We've got these two hoses. Uh, I put a little bit of blue tape around this one so I know it's on the left. And the other end goes on the top left corner of the radiator. That just slips on there. And the other hose will go on here. And then onto the top of the thermostat housing. Don't forget the Jubilee clip. Seeing as we're making everything nice and shiny, let's put a new Jubilee clip on there. I'm gonna reconnect the bottom hose on the radiator and fill it up with water. So I'm filling it up with water. I run the engine just to circulate it through um, and that way you should get more rust in here if there's anything left in the system. You'll be able to see it here. And then I'm going to drop the bottom hose off and then just repeat the process. I'm just going to keep flushing it through until it runs clear.
So as you can see, we've still got lots of rust in the system. So I'm going to drop the bottom hose off. Let's go for round two. There we go, that's after the second flush. Right, that's after the third flush. The engine's been running for a few minutes. I'm gonna drop the hose off the bottom and I think we're ready for our coolant because that's pretty clear. Get our radiator. And this offers the system corrosion protection. It stops it freezing. You can buy the concentrated stuff, but I prefer the ready mix. It's just easier, and then that way you know you're getting the right concentration. Try not to spill it everywhere. I'm just gonna go and start the engine and let it circulate. And that way, if there's any air, it should push up through to the reservoir. That's the cooling system completely flushed out. We've got a brand new radiator, brand new thermostat housing with a new seal. So less points of failure. Um, as you can see, it's so clean in here now and the engine's been running. That should hopefully stay clean, um, providing we don't let any air or any water get in the system. The whole reason it went rusty in the first place was because I had a leak from my hot water chlorifier system. Um, and I've just topped it up with normal water. That's no good because it's got oxygen in the normal water, so it causes corrosion inside the engine. You wanna get rid of that normal water and make sure you put the correct mix of coolant in there. That's why I like to use the pre-made stuff. There's a few different types you can get, mainly they're blue or red, but there's a few other ones. So just make sure you use the right coolant and antifreeze for your vehicle, and that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found value in this content. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And thank you so much to everybody that's already subscribed. It really helps grow the channel and it allows me to carry on making these videos. So if you enjoy them, make sure you subscribe, it's completely free. And if you click the little alarm bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. And if there's anything in particular you would like to see on the channel, please let me know in the comments and I will try and incorporate it in some upcoming videos. So all that's left for me to do now is take it for a little test drive and by doing so we'll push any air out from the system and then we can just top up the reservoir as required and it wants to be in between the minimum and maximum line once we're on a level ground. <laughs>